Oh, what's going on guys? Today we are in the studio and I want to talk a little bit about style. What is style? All right, style, what is it? So style in my mind is a consistency of images that have similar tones, feel, look, storytelling, characteristics, especially when it's on the grid. If you're on an Instagram grid and you're looking through, let's say classic example of style would be short stash. Pretty funny how he's moved from Sony to Canon. So good on your short stash, Canon guy. But style, it is a t that he has a typical, very, very consistent style. There is no one else that I've seen that has such consistent style like him. And also the storytelling aspect. His storytelling capabilities are elite. Style is a consistent flow of images that tell stories that have a certain amount of tones or something that it really pulls you in. Style can be color, style can be storytelling, style can be your, your, your sport that you're shooting, style can be the lifestyle and staying consistent on that lifestyle. And style takes time. Style is a very, a, a long game. You can't, you can't force style. You can look at your favorite photographers and what I say is deconstruct, emulate, analyze, repeat on those favorite photographers. And if you're finding someone that you like, for example, what I did is I loved Emmett Sparling, Samuel Elkins, Andrew Kearns, very, very good storytellers, especially Andrew Kearns with his outdoor branding, lifestyle, warm tones. I really wanted to hone in on that. So try and find someone that you really enjoy. That's a, that's a photographer that you really enjoy their style, whether it's the warmth of it, whether it's a storytelling aspect, whether it's however the, the images make you feel, and hone in on that. And then emulate that in your work. Go out and shoot, find a friend, look for something that you wanna shoot that that aligns with your values because ultimately you want to be shooting the things you enjoy. It looks good. I think it looks good. If you're going out and shooting things that you don't enjoy, then any reasonable human will quit. So find something that you enjoy and start there. Let's go to the other side. Great work. Good shit. Uh, realistically, what I focus on every single shoot I go into is the story. And then I'll only post on Instagram or like my favorite on the social medias, like the favorite ones I enjoy that aligns with my style. I've become more strict now with what I post and I want those warm film vibes and that is really what I'm after. And if we jump into Dorje's shoot here recently, I'll show you what I've, I'll show you how I sort of narrated this style and, and created this storytelling aspect with the warm tones, there's a little bit of grain. And, and, and when you're shooting, always, always, get, always get someone to, always get your talent to be doing something. There's, difference, there's a difference between portraits, right? They want to be looking at the camera, you want a nice portrait, you want to set it up. That is, that is beautiful, but if, you're want, if you want to focus on story, then that is getting them to do something. What are they doing? It's location, character, event. Choose a nice location. Have a character wear some cool clothes, hat, something different, something with a bit of vibe to it. And then you've got an event. What are they doing? Is it a sport? Are they picking flowers? is gonna pick some flowers. Are they adjusting their coat? very much a lifestyle to style shoot like I did with Dorje with in the winter we, we were we wanted the we wanted to focus on the clothing so she's interact with the interacting with the clothing so if you've got a, a clothing shoe focus on that what can she do to look good to make the clothing look good and sort of bring you in to ask questions that's essentially what you want that is a part of the narrative it, this takes time. The confidence in directing models and talent takes time. You can't get this overnight. Each time you shoot, you'll go out and you'll learn more and you, you'll become more confident. Hair all around that side. And as you gain your competence, you will get confidence. And that will give you momentum. And that momentum will carry you on to give you a bit more, a bit more like, it, it'll light the fire to keep consistent. And that's where you wanna be. 
and you want confidence in your work to then start pitching to clients. And that is really where you want that momentum to keep moving forward in your photography. So let's quickly dive into a Dorje, a couple of photos of Dorje here. Okay, so it's simply the style. It's, we want it to be consistent. We're looking here, there's these warm tones here, right? You've got her doing something. She's playing with the flowers. You've got her interacting with the flowers there. You've got her looking at the camera. It's cute, it's nice. Let's go these, let's make sure all these are four stars. Now, this is how I, this is how I, this is how I work with mine. I, I star. What I, what I do with all my photos is I cull them in, in Photo Mechanic and then I'll bring them into Lightroom and then I'll cull them again. So I'll, I'll give them all the four stars that I want to keep. And then from there, I'll edit them up. You can see here, I've got 105 photos. So with Dorje, I have, it's, it's, about getting, it's about getting some portraits, but also interacting with her, with the flowers. And I'm gonna press tab and you'll see the before and then there's the after. So there's really nice warm tones coming through. Drop the highlight slightly on her, on her white top. Uh, brought in a little bit of grain. If we go Command 8, 31, go Command 1, we're back to the normal screen. I've up the warmth, look at that, 7,700. That's what it was like previous, and then I've hit that. So this is using my film grain, which I'm going to start selling soon. I wanna, add, I wanna get that up. So that'll be available soon. And if we keep going through, like it's this beautiful story, like she's picking the flowers. Look how clean this is. I love this. Really, really like this. Um, I f this is just going to load a little bit. And she's, and why do I love this so much? I guess it's, she's got these, like this flower is in focus and, and you can see around here, as well, like you got to look at the, the subject. The subject right here is in, there's a gap between her shirt. That's like one of the first things I've noticed as well. When you're shooting a subject, try and have a clean gap around it. It's not, I mean, it's so much easier said than done, but it really, just these small subtle things really help. So as you can see, the flowers is in line with the green background. It wouldn't be as pleasing to me if that tip of the flower was up against her shirt. It would get lost slightly. And it's like just, just these small subtle things that, that help the image become super clean. And there's a really good story here. She's, she's picking flowers. Her left hand is holding the flower. Her right hand is about to grab another one. Love this image. And I've, I've added a little bit of grain here. Let's go again, Command 8, 31, warm vibes. And if we go tab, that's what it was like earlier. Before, after, before, after. So it's really, the style I'm going for is like this warm, slightly grainy look. I don't always put grain on my images, but sometimes I like, I like the coat she's wearing. It's a little bit of like an older style. So then I'll add grain because it makes it feel like a little bit vintage a little bit filmy, so it depends on what the model's wearing. So you take that into consideration. And also take into consideration complementary colors. If she's in green, like if she's around the bush, try and have some pink, reddish, orangey tones of, of, some, of, of some outfits of what she's wearing. And we keep going on, she's putting the flowers in. All these images are adding up to a story. She's looking at the camera and I think I said to her, hey, look away from the camera, pretend I'm not here. And then she did that and she's gone in again. So go up and get some tight photos of, of like the details of your model and then pull back and get a wide and that'll add to the story. And then when you're posting on Instagram, you can have these variable of, of photos that's, so it's not just one shot of just like a medium shot. Go in and get the tight and then pull back, get the wide. You can really complement each other. And that adds to the story. That is the narrative. And that's how we gotta be thinking if you wanna take your photos to the next level. And then there's, there's pulling in for a portrait. Like throw your, just experiment. Throw your, throw the buddy, flower in your ear have a have a bit of a play and then I've uh, let's have a look at before after really warmed her up here and I've also 
Just look at the eyes and, and check this out. Let's go here. I've, I've also brushed her eyes and made her eyes a little bit bluer. That's not it. Might be that one. Let's look at what they were before. Off, on. See, so very, very subtle, but I've just made her eyes pop a little bit. And to do that, you just get a brush and you just brush around up the shadows, up the exposure slightly. Otherwise, if you do it too much, they look like they've got like devil eyes. It's too much. Just really, really subtle movements here. And all those little subtle edits add up to the bigger picture. Cruising along here. Now, yeah, it's just, it's, it's all about the story, guys. Focus on the story. And this brings you in. It like creates this emotion. It's this, it's this sense of asking questions it's a narrative it's really nice and that's that's what i what i focus on every time i shoot and i've learned that from andrew kearns finn beale samuel elkins like they are the the forest mankins like it's the best photographers in the world i've just seen how they operate and essentially that's what i wanted to try and do in my photos that's how i wanted to to make people feel in my images as well and this is amazing. I love this shot. Let's have a look here. This is before, this is after. And she's just, again, she's like in the middle of doing something. She's kind of, I like the tilt of her leg here. It's like, it sort of creates this sort of feeling in her body and it's like an S shape. It's just a bit more, comp it's, it's more pleasing on the eye than just her standing with both heels on the rock. So think about that as well. How can they move to just create create a bit of a bit of a curve? A bit, I don't know. There's something about it, and and I think it's also because she's half. I told her to half do up her jacket. It's like how can you how? Because if you just stand there and look at the camera, it's it's like not that pleasing. So I mean, she's beautiful, but it's it's like we're going into portraits then. If you would, it's like are you shooting a portrait or are we shooting lifestyle? So define what you want because they're two different things. Lifestyle is getting them to interact with the clothing or, their, or whatever they're doing, or whatever they're holding or the prop. Portrait is them looking directly into the camera and posing. This is still posing, but they're interacting with the clothing. So she's sort of cocking her leg here. She's, she's I told her to put her jacket on and like half put it on and then just like go to slip her jacket the right side up and that's exactly what she's done and I think she's also she's quite naturally good at moving so she's gone to just brush her hair as well and I feel like this all really complements together the leg movement the the half arm in the jacket the 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 hairbrush looking down you're not looking at me so it creates this feeling of me not being there and the other thing is is like I'm not a huge fan of all these rocks. To me, it's like pretty messy, but I'm just letting my symmetry eye be in this one because I'm not gonna go and delete all these rocks. So just think about that as well. So let's go back out, press F, press tab. That's what it was like before. That's what it was like after. Now, if we clean some up things, I'm gonna double click there, double click the highlights. I've brought the highlights down in this. You can see I've um, vibrance is down. Looking at this though, I'd almost like bring the vibrance back up again to maybe two. Um, this is again, this is using my film film look. It creates a nice warmish. Oh, actually, that hasn't put it. That hasn't given it that warm. I think I've used my film look, and then what I've done is I've really warmed it up. So I've warmed it up, brought up the shadows drop the clarity in the dehaze. And I, I love this look with the, the dehaze. You can sort of see how it's quite contrasty there. Whereas this is a little tip here. If, if you bring the dehaze down, it removes that contrast and flattens it out a little bit. And I really like that look. And also my photos don't have to be super sharp. I've brought down the clarity to 10, brought that down the dehaze to 12. And that's okay. Your photos don't need to be super sharp. We go Command 2, haven't done a lot with the curves here. I've just brought down the shadows slightly and that's just about it. I haven't done anything in these curves. Command 3, 
Uh, the yellows are up. You can see what's happening here. Aquas are down. That's that's sort of saturation, luminance, all pretty even through there. Hues. It's all, style is all about the eye of what you want. What do you want? Do you like the warmer tones? Then just play around with the warm tones. Do you like it to be contrasty? Think about how much contrast you want. If it's too much, drop the dehaze and, and just work around it. It it's all comes down to just playing, experimenting, shooting again and again and again. I had no idea with, with my style and what I wanted years ago, but now over time you just, I like this warm film look, uh, almost almost like flattening some of the blacks there as well, like crushing a little bit of the blacks. Like I don't like too many greens in my photos, but we're in the middle of winter in the southwest here in Western Australia and there's green everywhere. So I've just had to accept it and, and let it be. So we go command four, we're, we're upping the, the shadows. We're making it pretty warm, like a little bit warm there. We've got eight in the shadows. Highlights again, three. So I like to bring it warm, tiny bit warm. And remember to remove the chromatic aberration. I'm not sure if that, I think some lenses just naturally do it. No, so that's what it looked like. Enable profile corrections. Enable profile corrections. Bring that up and it, and it takes that vignette away. So that's what you want to be doing. A bit of gray in there, 25. And that I don't really touch much of that the uh, the primary colors either so style takes time style is how do you want to portray your images it's the story it's the color it's the mood it's the feeling it's it's everything in your images and style is all about consistency once you figure out those things and and create your own preset Consistently put that preset on and tweak it and then that will be your style over time And remember you don't have to put on Instagram all the different styles I've got so many shit photos that I just haven't put up so leave that on your computer Take your best couple of photos that add to that style Complement your grid post that and that is how people will perceive your style Look at your favorite photographers. Who are they? Deconstruct, emulate, analyze, repeat, reach out to them, do what you can. Like if you have any questions, ask me and uh, ask me how I sh just anything. I'm happy to help other photographers. I know exactly how it is. I was there and, and we're all still learning. Always a student, never a master. Also guys, if you like this content, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. I want to keep putting out this genuine information on how Photographers can get better with their style, with their storytelling, behind the scenes, how I shoot with with brands, um, creating pitch decks. I'm actually shooting with Canon coming up soon, uh, which is really, really exciting. So that'll be on across their social media in the next month or so. And this is a really cool time. So I just want to help you guys, help to learn. Ask me any questions, I'm happy to help. I'll fire them back on YouTube, hit me up on Instagram, whatever. It's, uh, I wanna just get this information out so everyone become, can, can, can become better photographers. So that's all for today and uh, that's my take on style. So thanks very much for, for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Remember, like, subscribe, share, and we will, I will see you on the next one. Thanks guys. And remember when you're shooting four different changes, you can pretend like it looks like you've shot on a different day so you can post different times on your Instagram and get away with it. That's the, uh, that's the key. Nice work. Cha <laughs> wardrobe changes so you look like you've shot on a different day but really you haven't.